We want to talk a little bit also about the mentality because that's a really big part of starting. It's the mo it's a moment where a lot of people tell us, I get so nervous before the gun goes off, you know, or I get, I get so nervous and I feel, I feel my heart pounding in that last minute for the start. And like, we've totally been there. If you didn't ever feel nervous, that probably means you don't care about sailing. And so being a little nervous is okay. Um, but the fear of being over or the fear of screwing up can really um, have a more detrimental effect on your race than an occasional OCS. Uh, and so I just want to talk a little bit about a few ways to like manage that, um, that sort of anxiety. Um, first of all, knowing your fleet and how frequent the OCSs are actually, you know, given is, is a helpful way to reassure yourself that like the fleet that is or is not pushing the line a lot. Uh, and, and so that can just help give you a little bit more confidence and help, um, remind you that when you think people are over, they, they most of the time are not. Um, we like to know who are the repeat offenders and what condition do they do it in, you know, so we can tell you which teams when it's windy are over frequently or which teams when it's light are over frequently. Um, and that does help when I, I think, okay, I think they're over. And then I know that they've also had three OCSs this year. So, you know, that's, it's kind of, you're doing like some, uh, research on your opposition research. Um, but I also want to reiterate that like communication can really influence the confidence levels on the boat. And so from the crews, like it's my, it's my responsibility to manage time and distance. If I say something like, Steph, I don't know where the line is, don't be over, you know, <laughs> that just totally puts her on her back foot. You know, that is like not a way to help uh, anyone accomplish anything. That just makes her feel like all she can do is screw up. Um, but if I say, uh, can't see my line sights, we're going off bows. You know, that's a really diff I'm communicating the same thing. I'm saying, I don't know where the line is, you know, but it's in a way that's forward thinking, it's proactive and it's saying, we're going to go off the bows and we're all either all going to be over together or we're all going to be okay together, but we'll have a good start. Um, Steph, did you want to add anything else to mentality before we get into like scoring starts and stuff? Yeah, I think, you know, another part of the mentality and I think it's really important for skippers is just to really, really be aggressive and just like really own it. And I think I said that in our last chat about owning your game plan and you just, you have to own your, own your start too, and really, really aim to take control. And it's almost like, you know, when that one minute gun goes, it's like, it's all on from there. And you really just, you put all of your energy into making the best start that you can. And um, yeah, I think a lot of it just comes from being aggressive and and having good boat handling and, and trusting your boat handling and, and all your, your training up until that point. Yeah, and one thing that helped me is when we started talking about those last 30 seconds, like the concept of being brave and trusting yourself and trusting that your transits were good and trusting that your time and distance is good. And, and you can you get to that point when you feel like you've practiced it a lot, but then to take that next leap out of regatta and actually trust it all and, and, in, in, and uh, implement it, you kind of have to be brave at a certain point. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that if you are gun shy at the start and you tend to start in second or third row starts, um, you're always going to be questioning your boat speed and your tactics. It's so easy to finish a race that went badly uh, because you had a bad start and say, well, I was slow, but were you really slow or did you have bad lanes, you know, because you had a bad start or uh, I couldn't catch a single shift. And the question you need to ask yourself if you're not starting well is like, were you not, catch were you not, getting a single shift or were you not able to make choices and capitalize on shifts because your decisions were dictated by where all the other boats are. And um, so we learned that like uh, taking a little more risk and getting an occasional OCS was actually uh, better than being really um, risk averse and being under the line at all the starts. You're just, just giving up boat lengths, you know, to, if you're, if you're consistently starting under the line that you would not give up anywhere else around the race course, you know? <laughs>